Hello, Warren Wolf. Welcome to Counting Countries. And I'm hoping you can take a moment and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Lauren Wolf. I'm counsel at Travelers United. Travelers United is a travel consumer advocacy group based in Washington, D.C. Uh, I, in addition to loving to travel and consumer advocacy, I am a huge fan of biking and I've recently gotten into running. I will do my third marathon this year, and I, of course, because I love travel, hope to eventually run a marathon on every continent. Hmm. Well, it sounds like you're a troop, triple, or even quadruple threat. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to talk to you today, and we're going to get to this in a moment, uh, but Travelers United and yourself filed a complaint against uh, extreme traveler and influencer Cassie Durr Peckle. Um, which I found fascinating and interesting. And she's been a name very well known in the extreme travel community for at least five years or even more. I can't recall uh, how long we've uh, been debating her veracity and her claims. So we'll get to that in a moment. But of course, when I get to meet somebody who's an avid traveler, been to over hundred countries, I wanna learn a little bit about that passion not so much the running, which is awesome, but so tell me, how did you, what's your background in terms of travel that inspired you? Or what was this catalyst to make you an outlier? I'm sure not that many of your friends in DC have been to over a hundred countries. Why you? That's a great question. I have no idea. I was bit by the travel bug, as I'm sure many people, most people probably listening to this podcast are, have been. Um, but, you know, I grew up in Michigan, just outside of Detroit. My parents ran a Hallmark store. And so as part of that, we got to travel to, you know, Hallmark meetings in Las Vegas and Kansas City. And I was always so excited to go to those just to see other parts of America. And I really think there's maybe something in the blood because my mom um, grew up poor and said that on her 11th birthday, her parents asked her what she could get. And she said, I want to ride in a plane. And they sent her to visit um, her cousins who live outside of Pittsburgh. And she said it was the most exciting thing, you know, ever. And I'm very lucky that my parents, you know, took me to Europe when I was a kid. And I thought that was fascinating. I have some relatives and family friends over in Germany. So I've stayed mm -hmm for months at a time with them when I was uh, growing up. And I think being in Europe, you know, really showed me how awesome um, other cultures and learning about other countries and languages was. And then, you know, I studied German a lot in uh, college and um, just kept wanting to travel. The more you see, the more you <laughs> want to go to more places. And okay. I, took a year off uh, and traveled around the world um, for one year. And that's really then it just, you know, then I wanted to just see more after that year. The list never gets shorter. So exactly. Lauren, you've seen over half the world, 102 countries. We know this is an impossible question to answer, but share with me one of your favorites, one of your favorite countries or places or cities. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough to go to Syria right before all of the troubles started. Um, and I mean, right before, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, my friend and I had such a good time there and were treated so well with such incredible hospitality. There were almost no other tourists in mm -hmm. the country. And, you know, what you see in the media is obviously not great. Um, it looks incredibly dangerous and life-threatening. And to this day, when I tell people I had a great time in Syria, they think I'm nutty. But my friend and I felt were totally safe. We took public transportation throughout the entire country. We went all over Syria for two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, we were dancing in Damascus <laughs> at a fun bar, like very <laughs> liberal attitudes uh, towards everything particularly in Damascus, you know, fun coffee shops that would be similar to like Starbucks. 
And that's not really ever shown in the media and people think it's incredibly dangerous, but the hospitality and fun that I had and delicious food that I had Mm -hmm. in Syria is something that I'll always remember. And just kind of the contrast of what you see in the news versus what a country is actually like. Mm. Yeah, I agree. A very similar experience for myself. I thankfully and luckily went before the Arab Spring. You know, I, I remember crossing the border from Jordan to Syria I was a tad apprehensive because, you know, I wasn't quite as well traveled back then. And the narrative was, you know, it's a dangerous terrorist state. And to me, it was a fantastic visit. And both of us are quite fortunate because obviously it's so difficult for people in our community, especially with American passports to get those Syrian visas. So uh, kudos to us for our good luck in in timing. And Lauren, you, you know, you shared with me no set goal, but your hope at some point is to visit every single country in the world. And obviously very, very well-traveled at 100 plus, but there's a difference between visiting 50 or 100 countries to stating to yourself or your friends or your family that at some point you're going to travel to them all. Was there a light bulb moment? Was there a catalyst? Is there a mentor or a role model that kind of has pushed you down this path of traveling and chasing 193? Um, I've just always been interested in travel, other languages, other countries, et cetera. And, um, you know, I just remember I went to Smith College and sitting in the dorms at Smith College and looking up uh, women who have traveled and women who have traveled to every country. And I believe I was probably reading about Audrey and Dorothy at the time. And Mm was like, wow, these women are awesome. Um, And think that, you know, maybe if I'm lucky enough in my whole life, uh, I would like to also go to every country and see every place. And I know that, you know, geography and politics are always changing. There's always new countries, countries that are no more, etc. So I think, you know, by the end of my life, I would like to see it all. Awesome. Uh, Thankfully, Travel does seem to be opening up. Hopefully, we'll continue uh, down this path of openness. Any travel plans that you have on the books that you're looking forward to in 2022? Yes, of course. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm, uh, aside from traveling around the United States, uh, which is probably not that interesting to people on this podcast, but uh, aside from traveling around the United States, hopefully going to Scandinavia, Italy. Um, That's all I've got planned for right now. Well, that sounds good. So I'm going to make kind of a drastic pivot and I'm going to read this quote to you. So we're going to jump right in, go right for the juggler. And this is a quote. I don't know if it's some sort of press release that Cassie Durpeckel has sent out. This complaint referring to the legal complaint from Travelers United, is yet another baseless attack on me and my accomplishments. She added that she intends to vigorously contest what regrettably appears to be a rehash of the same untenable allegations that have been leveled against me in the past. So we're going to jump right in. If you can respond to that. Yeah, um... You know, I researched this complaint and have been working on it for over a year. Um, I've talked with many people and read an incredible amount of articles, talked with Virgin Galactic and um, with Guinness World Records. Uh, I've reached out to so many people um, before filing this. I also just want to stress that Travelers United is a teeny nonprofit and we do not want to be filing lawsuits unless we feel that it is absolutely necessary. Um, We have limited resources. We think, frankly, that the FTC should be doing this, but we hope that this lawsuit pressures them to actually start to take action against influencers who are not telling the truth in advertising. Um, In terms of Cassie, you know, I don't want to sit here and say that you know, everything she says is not true because 
that is simply not true. And I also do think that, you know, she had an incredible accomplishment of going to every country the fastest. And that if she had stuck to that, which other people like Taylor, who did that about a year after her did, you know, there wouldn't be absolutely no problem here. The problem is that she says that she is the first woman to travel to every country when that is not true. Um, And then she uses that claim to sell products. Um, You know, there wouldn't be an issue if she wasn't really selling products. Mm -hmm. Um, And in addition to her comment uh, or claim to be the first woman to travel to every country, she also claims that she's going to be the first sponsored astronaut to travel to space with Virgin Galactic. Um, That seemed to be news to Virgin Galactic when I reached out to them. Mm -hmm. And so there's just a real issue here of saying whatever one can say in order to get more followers, in order to get bigger brand deals, in order to sell products to those mm-hmm. followers. And, okay. Well, yeah. let, let's let's touch on that in a bit. So uh, let's take one quick step back. Travelers United is a consumer advocacy nonprofit group. So w- yeah. what does that mean exactly? What is your mission statement? And obviously... I know you're not just suing well-known social media influencers. You're doing a lot of other work within this space to protect consumers within the travel industry. So what's Travelers United all about? Yeah, we're a consumer protection group that focuses on travel. So um, we have one other big lawsuit that's going on, and we've sued MGM Resorts International over not disclosing hotel resort fees and their use of comps when they're still charging resort fees on a room that's comped. I would say that's not comped, but uh, that's, you know, the case at hand. Yeah. And well, I, I want to thank you because I uh, it's been a while, but I was in Vegas several years and I was extremely irritated with all these additional fees tapped on to all the different hotels on the Strip. So in short, we can say that you guys are a uh, c- consumer. Av- you're, you're looking out for the consumer in regards to issues in regard to travel and trying to help them out where you guys see wrongs uh, within this industry. Um, So back to Cassie. And what this all comes down to at some level is Cassie's claim. So Cassie claimed initially that she was the first woman in the world to travel to every country. And within this complaint, you're saying that's incorrect, that's false. Touch on that for a moment, if you can. Yeah. And again, we wouldn't have to file this complaint if uh, Cassie's main source of income was not posting on social media and then getting these brand deals and selling products to her followers with this false claim. So if somebody's making a claim in the travel world, and it's impacting consumers and what they're purchasing, that's definitely of issue to Travelers United because we're a travel consumer advocacy group. It actually, I'm probably one of the younger people in the travel or just generally the consumer advocacy space, particularly in Washington, D.C., which is not great. So if you're younger than me, which you highly might be, I suggest you get into consumer advocacy. Mm. But um, it took, you know, a bit of work to convince people that this is a consumer advocacy issue. And it is. Uh, I really adamantly believe that so many people, probably mostly under the age of 40, are using Instagram or using TikTok to look at what hotels are amazing, what countries are amazing, what airlines should I fly And if they don't know something's an ad or not, if they don't know, you know, the person hawking the product didn't actually use the product or isn't who they say they are, it makes it impossible for a consumer to come up with an actual determination of if they want that product or not. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's really why we brought this lawsuit. It, It seems as simple as a false claim 
tied together with false advertising. Yes. Um, you, it, it, I mentioned this before, your complaint, it's over 100 pages. I've, I can't say I've read every page, but I did go through it twice. It's incredibly detailed. So back to Cassie's claim of being the first woman to travel to every country in the world. What was your research? What did you find out? Um, yeah, I mean, I uh, chatted with a lot of people with Guinness World Records, with others, um, with many, many people in the travel community, people who uh, do count, um, you know, and verify con different groups that verify people's travels, etc. And kind of everybody seemed to agree that... Um, including Guinness World Records, that, you know, great respect for Cassie to going to every country the quickest in 2017. It was, uh, but, you know, she's unquestionably not the first woman to go to every country. And one of the things that I found that was very concerning was that Cassie herself had sent out press releases saying that she was the first woman to travel to every country. Um, I also found numerous people who said that they had contacted her before she even began her trip, who told her she wouldn't be the first woman to every country, and she ignored them or blocked them on social media. Um, in addition to that, I'm extremely, you know, annoyed, concerned, and just kind of disgusted because I went to Smith College, it's an all-women's college that's known for, you know, a lot of uh, women's history and important um, political figures from Julia Child to uh, Gloria Steinem. And one thing that I certainly learned at Smith College is to acknowledge the women who have done the work before you to pave the way for all of the opportunities that we have today. And... The fact that she did not acknowledge and attempted to erase the accomplishments of the women before her um, really, to me, is extremely concerning and a serious problem. Um, I really thought, personally, this needed to stop. Um, and obviously, Travelers United uh, has been brought into this um, to file this complaint. And it just seemed the more that I looked into it, um, I really could not find absolutely anybody who thought that Cassie was in any way, shape or form the first person to go mm -hmm. to every country. And um, just to give a reference to my listeners on counting countries, um, two people that you mentioned in your complaint are two people, two women that I've interviewed uh, on counting countries, both Audrey Walsworth from the U.S., and Nina Sedano from Germany are both two women who've traveled to every country and uh, much earlier than Cassie did. Now, you just mentioned something. So, I, I mean, I, I'm guessing when you're filing a complaint and there's a lawsuit, you have to, in essence, prove that the defendant was aware that they were uh, acting fraudulently. I'm not sure if that's the right legalese. And you mentioned, and you have proof again, I'm going to uh, link to this document because it's, it's so deep and so it covers so many different issues. But you share people reaching out to Cassie on social media or email or in conversations uh, where she shuts them down. So touch on basically her, you know, her giving the face, face palm to these people who are trying to correct Cassie before she uh, proceeds further down that path. Yeah. Um, I talked with a lot of people and there's a lot of also just information that anybody could access online um, that, you know, Cassie originally said this claim in 2015 that she was going to be the first woman to travel to every country. People saw her investor deck and pitch deck from then which also is in the complaint. And she says she's trying to get sponsors and people to pay for her trip. And she says there that she will be the first woman to travel to every country. Um, numerous people said that they reached out to her. You know, this is on a lot of uh, info is already online. And people that I also, in addition to chatted with, said that they reached out to her in 2015, 2016, when she was traveling. 
and that she would just ignore or block anybody that uh, said that she wouldn't be the first woman to go to every country. So she seemed to really just try to shut out and scream the loudest that she was and hope that that would bring her success and more uh, Instagram followers. Mm. And <laughs> this, this part of your complaint caught my attention. You have some screen prints of tweets from 2017. And Cassie is addressing some travelers, some tra travel bloggers, some extreme travelers who questioned her claim. And there's a thread of Cassie responding to these people. 2017, where Cassie calls them, the people who questioned her, meaningless ants for which they are. So it, it seems like, I mean, she was quite strident in her opinions and interactions with people who were questioning her. Yeah. And I think it's really concerning and particularly because I'm a woman, I went to an all women's college. Um, you know, I know that she used the argument, uh, well, I'm a woman and you're doubting women's accomplishments, but the uh, fact that she's, you know, and I know that in the extreme travel community, it's overwhelmingly male. Um, and I think she used that fact to her basically benefit because I think a lot of men didn't want to kind of, you know, jump in on the discussion of, are you the first or not, or just even get involved. But to me, as a woman who values women history and the woman who went before me, I think it's incredibly offensive that she would uh, even say this and not acknowledge the women who mm. went before her, which are, it's easy to find online. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I was reading about this when I was in college in 2005. Mm. So um, I was really concerned. Uh, I really found out first about this story personally when I was watching uh, the Today Show on NBC and saw Jenna Bush Hager interviewing her. And I thought, wow, they're going to need to retract this because this is obviously not true. I have lived in Germany for about three years of my life, probably total. And I knew, um, you know, about Nina um, from, from Germany. And I was like, wow, how did NBC get you know, caught up in this. Um, but then I was really surprised to see the social media reaction after and that she just was relentless in saying, no, it was her. And it was like, she was just blocking everybody and thought if she could basically say it the loudest with the best photos, it would be true. And mm. this complaint obviously seeks to, you know, show that women did this uh, long before her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that was a lot of frustration within the travel community is, you know, whether it's a, you know, um, a, you know, you, you have to give credit to the people who came before you and paved the way um, instead of saying, you know, you broke the glass ceiling without any realization or appreciation for the people before who really were the catalysts or assisted you in your journey. I also want to take one quick step back. And if I understand kind of the rationale of the complaint, it's Cassie makes a false claim. I'm the first woman to travel to every country in the world. With the false claim, she gets the media's attention. With the media's attention, she gets free earned media. And that free media gains her tremendous success on social media. And then the final, I think, part of this, with the great success in social media, she's able to create relationships with brands and services and in essence, sell or market them on her social media to her followers. But I don't know, again, if I'm using the right legalese, but she's doing this in a fraudulent sense because she's presenting herself not accurately. I, I don't know if that yes, little anecdote kind of sums it up. That is a good summary. Basically, you know, she sent out press releases saying she would be the first woman to every country. She went on the Today Show and the Cryon read, you know, uh, first woman to travel to every country. Um, she, you know, told the New York Times she's the first, you know, they wrote that. 
it's really impressive. And I do think um, maybe she doesn't have a great future and shouldn't be a uh, travel influencer, but I do hope that she has a successful career in PR because she's obviously worked and is incredibly um, impressive at the amount of press she was able to receive. Um, Yeah. I was going to say, if you Google her name, I mean, the amount of media and YouTube and articles is, yeah, I mean, it's an, it's an incredibly large amount, a large amount of press and PR that she got. Um, but you would have to question the veracity of the foundation that that was all built on. Let's make another quick pivot. I'm going to pick Kim Kardashian. And again, from the complaint, I don't know how many followers she has. I mean, whether it's 50 million or 100 million. But it sounds like for one post representing a brand, she can get a million dollars. That seems pretty easy work. Now, you found the media kit from Cassie's website, I believe from 2018. So maybe her numbers were not even as big as that on social media. And she was attempting or charging brands $4,500 for one post. Touch a, touch a little bit on how influencers make money and what that relationship is like with these brands who are promoting through these social influencers. Yeah, um, that's a great question. And one of the reasons this complaint is interesting and a few lawyers uh, are definitely interested in this complaint is that most of the actions so far uh, in the influencer world, of which there are still very few, have been about brands not disclosing um, that they're, that they have ads on social media and that they're basically taking advantage of the influencers. But what we're doing in this case is really saying, no, here the issue is, you know, yes, there's a problem with the brands, but the issue is the influencer herself is basically conning these brands into thinking that she's someone that she is not, um, you know, with, the claim of being the first woman to travel to every country, the claim of that she's going to be going to space with Virgin Galactic, which was news to Virgin Galactic. Um, You know, that is, is really the issue here. Um, Influencers to be a successful influencer, you need to have many followers who are actively engaged on your page and basically loyal to you and what you recommend. They have to think of you as authentic The more people that you have who follow you and think that you're authentic, the bigger and bigger brand deals you can get. Um, You know, it's easily $5,000 for somebody who has, she has about a half a million followers, so she can easily get $5,000 per Instagram post, probably even more for um, adding Instagram stories uh, at the top. So, you know, if you if she posts a photo in the permanent feed and a story, she could get eight thousand um, dollars from that. So after hearing what Cassie is able to charge, uh, I, I think this is going to be motivation to increase my numbers on social media. But nonetheless, one other thing I want to talk about in regards to Cassie is what seems to be her ever changing claims at times, meaning. I think day one, it was, I'm the first woman to travel to every country in the world. And at times today, I see that. But other times, I also see first documented woman to travel to every country in the world. Does that distinction make a difference? Comment on what that means. No. Um, I mean, I uh, have communicated with Guinness World Records um, and, you know, her documentation shows that she was the fastest woman to have done, to have traveled to every country between 2017 and 2018. And after that, Taylor Devenbrun um, beat her record. The documented really means nothing um, because Guinness World Records did not document her as the first uh, woman to travel to every country Mm -hmm. at all. They documented her as the fastest woman in 2017. Yeah. Um, So so I think what you're you're getting at is she is claiming she's the first documented woman, 
But there's no universal governing body in the extreme travel community who can bestow that on her. So in other words, I can say I'm the first documented person to do something. And documentation could be, I wrote it in a notebook. It's documented. So in other words, when she says she's the first person documented, she is creating her own set of rules, only in essence being utilized by her to claim documentation. Is this, am I getting yeah. that right? That's that's true because um, basically what she's saying and what she has alleged in tweets and conversations and emails, um, some of which are public and some of just which have been shared with me, is basically that she thinks people like Nina Sedano and Audrey Wellsworth do not have uh, the same level of proof that she does, except that both women do have that much proof. You know, particularly Nina has showed all of her passports to the German press. They're, they've been photographed. You can easily find them online. Um, and Nina also had her travels verified by Nomad Mania. Uh, what I found interesting in uh, doing the research for this complaint was that Nomad Mania does not consider airport turnarounds as a visit to the country, meaning if you fly into a remote Pacific Island country, turn around on the same flight and never leave the airport. Sure, that may count as a visit from Guinness World Records, but it does not count as a visit to Nomad on Nomad Mania's uh, verification. So, you know, Cassie DePeckle never even had her travels verified with Nomad Mania because many of her country's visits would not count as a visit. Um, but, you know, Nina Sedano did have her travels verified mm -hmm. by that. Okay, so, so, so let's just kind of um, review that. So there's two organizations, and again, these um, are both third-party verifiers, but they are not necessarily universally accepted for every single traveler around the globe. But nonetheless, they provide two benchmarks. Guinness World Records, of course, extremely well-known. I believe their rule is as long as you put your foot on the ground, um, that will count as a visit to that country. You're referring to Nomad Mania, which is a great travel club and website, which also does third-party verification through one of their members. Um, and their rules are a little more um, stringent in terms of visits, saying, uh, I believe you're saying airport transfers don't count. And we know for a fact that Cassie herself has admitted in interviews that I don't know the exact number because from my understanding, read your complaint, that numbers change, whether it's seven or 15. And we also have a first party witness, I believe in Tuvalu who saw her, uh, what you're referring to, it's you either stay for 90 minutes at that time, or you had to stay for a week. And in this case, it was documented by a traveler in the extreme travel community that she got off the plane, hung around for 90 minutes and then jump back on. Um, so again, here we go. There's no universal governing body. So if it's for nomad mania, it wouldn't, she wouldn't even have been defined as visiting every country in the world. Yeah. Another issue with Guinness world records that I thought was interesting is that, you know, Guinness world records, uh, is in the business of records. So, they want to make it slightly easier for people to qualify uh, for as a country visit because they want more people to compete for these records. So their definition of what counts as a country visit or what is a country is also different than some of the boundaries of the United States, what they consider different country borders. You know, we're obviously not going to get into a giant discussion here about... Um, the borders of Israel, but the Golan Heights, um, according to Guinness World Records, if you visit the Golan Heights, you can count that as a visit to Syria, um, which if anybody here has been to the Golan Heights, which I have, like that's not, I, I would, uh, <laughs> that's not what the United States thinks is Syria. Uh, and I would highly recommend a trip to Syria. I think it's great. But, you know, and the same goes with North Korea right now, how people with uh, U.S. passports cannot um, enter North Korea 
by flying on an airplane and landing in, um, Seoul. you know, the capital, their Guinness World Records is allowing them to enter from South Korea, take a foot into the um, blue houses at the DMZ and come back. And that's what a few people who have recently done these Guinness World Records have done. I think most travelers would find that uh, not exactly a visit to North mm. Korea in any way, shape or form. Yeah. I, I mean, that's definitely in the gray zone. I think you're referring to Lexi Alford, who is the youngest woman to travel to every country in the world or youngest person. Uh, she holds a Guinness world record. She holds a U- American passport, was not able to enter sovereign North Korea. Um, she did fly to Seoul. She took the tour to the DMZ, Parmesan Village, entered in that little blue building. And, you know, we can debate this over beers and coffees and vodka shots. Was she in North Korea? Technically, not really. It's gray. But nonetheless, uh, Guinness World Records does allow that. And, And let's talk about Guinness World Records because, again, from reading your complaint, it sounds like some other false claims were made by Cassie in regard to this. Meaning, yeah, she does um, she does have two Guinness World Records, or did have two Guinness World Records? Fastest woman to travel to every country in the world, and fastest person to visit every country in the world. But you've mentioned another traveler, Taylor. Uh, who I can't pronounce her last name, Demon Braun, who I also interviewed, who now holds the record according to Guinness World Record. So my question to you is, I look at her social media and it says for Cassie, Guinness Worldwide Record Holder, shouldn't it say former? Yeah, I mean, on that issue, I I, I don't know. I mean, it I think it's up for debate, um, but I think it is an issue that, you know, she had the title for a year and that she's still doing things like producing these videos with Nas Daily saying that she was the fastest and, you know, first woman when Taylor would be the person who should be the subject of that video today. Um, you know, she did set two world record at one point, according to the rules of Guinness, which, as we've discussed, are questionable. Um, but, you know, she, she did hold the record for about a year. What? The issue is that she does still seem to hold on to that when the attention for those claims should now be on Taylor. Uh, okay, so Nas Daly is an unbelievably, extremely successful video maker on YouTube. Are you saying Nas Daly made a video of Cassie and during that video, they claimed she was the fastest person to travel to every country in the world, but she had already lost that record to Taylor? Yes. They uh, released this video about a year ago in March for Women's History Month. And again, this is why as a woman, I find this particularly concerning because not only is she erasing the history of the woman who went before her, she's erasing the history of women who went <laughs> after her. So um, Taylor should be the, really the subject of the video if they wanted to produce such a video and she wanted to do it. Um, but Cassie in the video says that she's the first and fastest woman to visit every country. And the video received, you know, hundreds of thousands of views if not more by now, um, because NAS Daily is just a hugely popular um, maker of videos for, um, you know, YouTube and Facebook. Um, And it's really unfortunate because, you know, this guy, he went to Harvard, he's got a staff of over 50, and he clearly fell for these claims, just like NBC, the New York Mm. Times, et cetera. Yeah, I want to talk about the media in a bit. So I want to go over a couple of other issues that are brought up in the complaint. Um, So we've been focusing on this false claim, um, which has really at some level driven her giant success. Um, One of the other issues, I believe there's laws regulating this, the Kim Kardashians of the world and everybody else. Um, One of the big requirements is this FTC rule that you need to clearly state it's an advertisement when you're being paid. So yes. address that issue and how does Cassie uh, get involved in in regard to this? Yeah, this is 
uh, an issue certainly that goes far beyond Cassie. This is an issue that unfortunately is pervasive in social media, particularly on TikTok and Instagram. Um, Influencers are often paid or at the very least are given free stays at hotels or they're given free flights by airlines and they don't disclose that either that these products were gifted to them or that they're being paid to stay in these hotels and write these reviews. Um, The FTC has made it very clear that if you get a financial benefit, you have to make it known. So what people should be doing if they're influencers is just very simply writing ad. You don't even have to hashtag it. You just have to write AD and then, you know, a space, a line, and then start comment, you know, like Mm -hmm. it's very easy. It's, it's really, you just have to be very clear about it. And if Mm -hmm. you, you know, if Marriott just gave you a free place to stay, you have to say like, you know, um, Marriott provided me with this stay. That is not happening on any of her posts. She stayed at numerous Ritz-Carlton properties, which are part of the Marriott family. Uh, Nothing is disclosed. It's very unclear what the partnership with Marriott here is. And, you know, Marriott is a leader in uh, hospitality in the United States. And we find it very concerning that they think that they're above the FTC. And clearly that Cassie does as well. Um, Not one of her posts from Marriott Hotels or the Ritz-Carlton have any disclosure on if it's an ad, if she got a free stay, uh, what the issue is. So the FTC is very clear. If you have a financial relationship with the brand that you're promoting or whatever you're promoting, you have to disclose it. That's good to know and something to keep your eye out for when you're looking at posts from travel influencers. So the next item I want to bring up, and this one seems... I mean, this one kind of made me laugh, is Cassie's a published author. She wrote a book. You can see it on Amazon. And what you're claiming in the complaint is Cassie was writing fake five-star reviews in a made-up name, which were really written by her. Explain what happened here. Yeah. um, It seems that she was writing numerous reviews. Um, I also talked with people in the extreme travel community who said that they had reviewed the book on Amazon, but their reviews um, were missing or no longer there um, because they tried to correct her again and say that she was not actually the first woman to travel to every country, which she very prominently claims in the book. Um, and that those reviews all got erased, but there seemed to be all these random glowing five-star reviews, which kind of made no sense. So um, I looked into it and I looked into it using, you know, like the Wayback Machine and other tools to see, you know, this is a random book. Uh, this is not like a New York Times bestseller. And if you get a 20 pay, twenty paragraph review about this random book, it's going to raise some flags and attention. And then you can see that from the 20 page or 20 paragraph review, it goes back to a page that's connected to her. Um, you know, this is another FTC violation. You can't uh, make up reviews. Uh, and actually, companies are starting to get fined for that. Um, so we, you know, at Travelers United thought that this is another interesting issue, um, that she's engaging in that violates, uh, the guidelines set by the FTC. That that one just seems incredibly petty to, to write those fake reviews. So that that caught my attention. The last one. So yeah, fake reviews are actually an increasing problem and it's, it's a serious consumer issue. So Mm -hmm. the last one I want to bring up, you've already mentioned it a couple of times, but I just want to make sure everybody kind of grasp what you're saying in the complaint. And this one's like full of hubris to me. It's alleged affiliations. Uh, Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic is one of a couple of companies, which is bringing civilians into outer space. And you've touched on it before, but explain what Cassie's claim is in regards to Virgin Galactic, the space tourism company. Yeah, she says that she has been accepted to travel to space with Virgin Galactic and that she will be the first sponsored astronaut. 
Um, I reached out to Virgin Galactic and um, honestly, when I got in touch with their government relations team in the United States, they thought that I had gotten the wrong department and that I was trying to reach uh, Virgin Atlantic, like mm -hmm. airline yeah. company. They were like, this is the space department. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, I, I'm aware. Um, so, you know, it, it seemed to be news to Virgin, uh, to, to the Virgin Space Department mm -hmm. that an influencer was claiming this. I also reached out to their um, press team who also declined to comment uh, about this. And it does not seem like she has any relationship at all to Virgin Galactic. And as we know, there've already been sponsored astronauts to space. Um, so clearly she's not the first one. And this claim, if I have my data correct, was made by Cassie in 2017. So like five years ago. Yeah. Um, she's been making this claim over and over and it's now in her bio on like her, um, Wondery page, which again, um, you know, I don't know if we're going to talk more about the role that the media plays and not fact checking, uh, any of this information, but it's a serious problem. Um, because, you know, uh, I think it would be cool if, you know, we all could travel to space and particularly women. And I think when they see, People like this who are highly likely um, not telling the truth with their affiliations, they, you know, are confused about what are the opportunities for regular people to travel to space. Um, and they think that, you know, you have to, you know, have 500,000 Instagram followers and make a face false claim in order mm -hmm. to go to space. But that that really should not be true. And I don't think it is true. And Lauren, I'm going to ask you to play armchair psychologist for a moment. What, what's, what's the rationale? What's the impetus for Cassie to make a claim like this, which seems to be just false, but also kind of pretty straightforward and easy to realize that this is a false claim you know, she started making five years ago and I guess is continually making what, what's her, what's her thought process. If you had a guess or hypothesize what's going on there. Yeah. The claim sells. So she made a video for GoDaddy that says I'm going to space. So that's a problem for GoDaddy. It's a problem for her and it's an issue for Virgin Galactic because she's just making up an affiliation with them. Um, and so you know, she thinks she has obviously become very successful and gotten half a million followers on Instagram due to her claim of saying that she's the first woman to travel to every country. Um, so I guess she thought she could also get away with other claims, like she's going to be the first sponsored astronaut when there clearly have already been sponsored mm -hmm. astronauts. Um, and she thought she could just get away with it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the more interesting she seems, the bigger brand deals she can get, the more press, and more import most importantly, the more followers who she can then sell products to. Hmm. So we, we have mentioned this a couple of times, so let's loop back here. And we're gonna the next category is complicity. And, and I think there's, besides Cassie, it couldn't have been done without two other players in essence. So let's talk first about the media is this the media's fault? I mean, they're not, they're not doing, they're not fact checking. What's going on with the media and Cassie? Yeah. Um, I think that because travel news is often seen as soft news, not hard news, there just are not enough people fact checking these stories. And that this, you know, people probably in the travel world don't generally send out press releases for, fake news. So I think that this is a very unique and concerning um, incident in, you know, travel consumer advocacy, where you have somebody who wants to become an influencer sending out false press releases so that they can get press so that they can then become a successful influencer who they can then sell goods mm. to people who are interested in travel. So yeah, I think, you know, NBC clearly um, did not do their research um, 
before they put together that show uh, piece for the Today Show. And it's really concerning because Nina Sedano is very well known in the German press and her articles have been covered by, uh, you know, the equivalent of the New York times, Mm -hmm. uh, in Germany, she's been photographed with all the passports. And as noted in the complaint, she's often talked about how she traveled alone, um, you know, years before Cassie went. And this was all accessible to NBC news and clearly no one looked into this. Um, It just shows that um, with enough determination and press releases, uh, apparently one can get these things onto the New York Times and the Today Show. Mm -hmm. The New York Times piece was corrected, though I have an issue with the correction. Mm -hmm. And the other partner sort of with the media, which you mentioned, is Cassie's partnerships with these big brands like GoDaddy in Marriott, and I, I guess my question is twofold here. One, they are complicit or allowing her to make these false claims on behalf of their brand. And then you also mentioned she's not using the uh, notation or hashtag of advertisement. So, I mean, I would hope these big brands who are writing, you know, sizable checks to these influencers are doing some fact checking on their own to making sure their partners are complying with the law. So address those two different issues of their culpability or responsibility for not fact-checking the information, uh, like Virgin uh, Galactic, and then the hashtagging. Yeah, well, it's two different issues here. Virgin Galactic, I I do not think, had any idea that Cassie was claiming uh, to have any relationship with them, and they never made any ads with her because they have – likely no relationship with Mm -hmm. her. So she's just falsely claiming she does have a relationship with them because it makes her seem cooler and more appealing to Mm -hmm. brands. But But I believe you said she made an ad with GoDaddy. So, yeah. So the issue then is with companies like uh, Venus, Razors, or uh, Marriott, or GoDaddy, who have produced advertisements with her. You know, Um, again, as somebody who really values and is interested in women's history and women's accomplishments, these brands are writing her checks so that she can continue the job that she has been doing of erasing the accomplishments of women before her. And I think that these brands should be held accountable. Um, GoDaddy has no excuse. They make billions of dollars a year. They have plenty of lawyers. They should be reviewing this content. This is not a joke. Like lawyers should be looking over the content that is produced by these influencers who are making GoDaddy ads. And the same with, you know, Venus Razors and Marriott Hotels. Like Marriott is based in Washington, D.C., right outside of Washington, D.C., where I live, I know they have many lawyers there, you know, like with (laughs) issues with their resort fee, um, lack of resort fee disclosures. But I also have a serious issue with the fact that they think that they can just, you know, have an influencer like this staying for free, erasing women's history and not disclosing that they're either being uh, gifted a room or are being paid. We don't know because nothing is disclosed properly. Hmm. So these brands need to be held, um, you know, accountable. And frankly, uh, something that I have been interested in and, and, you know, uh, we're working on here at Travelers United is if we've said in press releases and we've put online and we want to continue talking about, but if brands like Marriott and GoDaddy do not fix uh, what they have released uh, with this influencer so far, uh, we will sue them as well. Mm. Yeah, I, I was going to ask that question. So um, good to know, and I'll be interested to see what happens in regard to that. What's the point of the complaint, the lawsuit, meaning is the goal? I, I mean, it, it, this, is obvi- this isn't a criminal case. It's civil, I believe. Is it Cassie has to write a check? Does she have to give a uh, a, pu- a public apology? What, what's what's the goal of the lawsuit? Yeah, um, you know we're a nonprofit. 
a very small nonprofit in Washington, D.C. We're here to influence policy uh, to make it better, you know, travel better for American consumers. And how can we make travel better for American consumers? Well, just if people tell the truth. And so what we would love to see Cassie do is simply, you know, recognize that she's not the first woman to travel to every country. Um, you know, just simply admit to that, uh, correct, you know, her bio and social media, remove any affiliations that she may not have with Virgin Galactic, um, and correct her, uh, posts that do exist so that she discloses if she had a paid relationship or if she was gifted for, um, for those, uh, stays or posts or whatever. Um, so, you know, all we want is a, a policy correction. Um, and, you know, a lot of people may think, oh, it's so extreme that you had to sue her. And, and frankly, I agree. I wish we didn't have to take this step. But I think as uh, you and the extreme traveling community may know, she has been just relentlessly pursuing this idea that she's just going to be the first sponsored astronaut and she's going, she is the first woman to travel to every country. Um, and she's been given plenty of warning and there have been news articles and many people have spoken with her, but she continues to just try to basically yell the loudest and send out the most press releases, which have gotten her, frankly, incredibly far. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is just kind of stop this and tell the brands that they also have a responsibility to fact check. And we hope that this also brings attention to media like NBC to, you know, really pay attention even to soft news stories and fact check them. Did Travelers United reach out to Cassie before the complaint was filed? No. And is that, how does that work in the legal world? Is that typical that a uh, NGO nonprofit would do that? Or what's, what's the logic of rationale of not uh, reaching out to her first? Um, it, I think that, you know, she has been clearly told by hundreds of people that she was not the first woman to travel to every country. So one more organization telling her and then having her block them on social media or say that they don't believe in women's history is not going to be effective. Um, so unfortunately, we felt that the best way to end the deception and to bring some truth in advertising here was to simply file the lawsuit because that was going to be the only way to get her to change what she had been saying and the claims, um, you know, that she had been making to stop those. Have you heard from her representatives at this point? No. And what is, I know the, uh, the courts can move quite slowly here in the U S how does the time frame work? What, like, when can you, what, what, I mean, can it get quote unquote settled outside of court before you go to court or yeah, if I, it goes to court, how long will it take? Give us an overview of what will happen in the future. Uh, the first date is scheduled uh, towards the end of June. Um, the first potential court date. But like I said, uh, we don't, we didn't want to bring this lawsuit. Uh, we you know, have a million other issues that we could be focusing on mm. as a nonprofit that is very small. Um, as you know, there's a, a million issues in travel right now, particularly mm -hmm. in America. You know, we're very concerned that families can't sit together on airplanes, that people haven't been given the refunds they should have gotten for uh, COVID flights that were canceled, etc. I would love to focus on those issues and not this. Um, and not have to go to court. Um, so if she was willing to, you know, correct all her posts, fix her bio, issue an apology, then we wouldn't have to go to court. And I'd be happy to settle this outside of court. We just unfortunately thought that this needed to be brought because we really didn't think there was another way to get mm -hmm. her to... Um, Lauren, what, 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 Lauren, what does it look like? Meaning, I don't know the number, but there's hundreds or a thousand posts and articles and podcasts, which say she's the first woman to travel to every country in the world. So is it as simple of changing her bios and sending out one tweet that simply goes, 
hey, I just want to you know make this clear. I am one of the few women who've traveled to every country in the world, and I've held two Guinness World Records, and I'd like to apologize uh, for any confusion I've caused previously in any of my other claims. And one tweet, is that good enough? How, how does that work? Because, you know, you have many, many more uh, media mentions of the fake or false claim that you're alleging in this complaint. Yeah. And she also got, you know, half a million followers based off of this claim that's not true. Um, and yeah, I think that's a good question. And I would love to hear from people in the traveling community. Like I said, the only reason we filed this case is because we didn't think there was any other way. And, you know, we're here to represent all travelers, particularly like people who travel in the United States of America. So if you have any thoughts on the topic, you know, let us know, um, let me know, feel free to reach out to me because this is obviously the first lawsuit of its kind ever. Mm -hmm. This is the first case ever brought by a nonprofit uh, on this issue. Um, and the only reason we're bringing it is because the FTC should be doing this, but they are unfortunately very understaffed and mm -hmm. um, are not working on this now. So love to hear from you what you think. And I would also, like I said, really love to to not have to go to court about this and to to just have an apology. But if anybody has any thoughts on that, please let me know. Hmm. Okay, so a call to anybody listening to this. Feel free to send a comment on the post or social media and give some feedback or thoughts or ideas of what you think is appropriate um, should um, Travelers United be successful in this lawsuit. Uh, and I don't know if you are willing or able. I mean, do you have a strong degree of confidence that you'll be successful in this lawsuit? Yeah. I mean, again, uh, we don't want to go to yeah, court. Yeah. We'd love Understood. to uh, resolve this issue outside of court and just, you know, come to an agreement, have her fix her posts and her bio. Um, but yes, I think that this is a very, very clear case of somebody uh violating uh like truth in advertising laws washington dc has uh excellent consumer protection in terms of truth in advertising and they allow nonprofits to basically enforce the law as if they mm -hmm. are the attorney general so that's what we're doing here gotcha. and the, it's very clear uh as you know the 120 page complaint shows all of the violations that have taken place here and there have been many um, so I think that this is kind of a slam dunk case. Um, but like I said, I hope it truly doesn't come to that and that we can reach some sort of agreement before that. And I also just want to stress, we're not here to, you know, we want Cassie to have a great career moving forward. I think that she has truly incredible potential in PR and that people clearly should hire her. So we hope that she has a great future in travel ahead. We just want to make sure that all these posts are correct and that we honor the you know, achievements of women before and after Cassie. I think this is my last Cassie question. And you, you just mentioned this is the first lawsuit of its kind. I don't know if it's hundreds of thousands or millions of influencers who are out there, and I'm sure many of them are not abiding, all of them are not abiding by the letter of the law. Why Cassie? Is this a case of the squeaky wheel getting the grease of the thousands of influencers you could have brought this complaint? Why Cassie? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the issue here was that there, Cassie seemed to have the most issues. Um, I would say almost every travel influencer and content creator uh, might have some issues with disclosures of whether or not something was an ad or sponsored or maybe a little unclear about whether or not it was. That's probably an issue for, frankly, almost every content creator. But here we have additional issues of false claims in, in the basic premise of who they are and what they accomplished particularly in order to get the giant amount of influencers. So there's an issue with not just, you know, the lack of disclosures, which is pervasive in social media, but 
the basic bio of who the person is and then additional claims on top of that, like the first sponsored astronaut, which also seemed not to be true. So there were just a lot of issues here in addition to the reviews, which we also think is um, an unfortunate and growing problem uh, is people posting fake reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, and the FTC has is very, very clear that, you know, that is a serious no, no. So we thought that this um, particular influencer touched on all three issues uh, and really, frankly, was the only one um, in the travel community with such a large following. Okay, well, th there's that makes sense. Um, so, Lauren, I, I want to thank you. Fascinating conversation. And yeah, this is an issue affects anybody who's on Instagram or social media. You know, what is the veracity of the information that you're getting? So I, I think you're doing a good thing uh, with Travelers United and looking out for travelers, whether it's an issue like this or resort fees, which I'm very against, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so I want to wish you success in your travel. And before we sign off, how do people stay in touch with you personally, as well as your advocacy group? Yeah, so uh, Travelers United is just, you know, uh, find us online uh, or we're everywhere. We're Travelers United. Uh, I even started a TikTok for us, so maybe <laughs> we'll post about that sometime. Um, and then with me personally, uh, my Twitter is Lauren underscore Wolf uh, with an E on the end. And um, I have a, an Instagram uh, with about 200 followers. So, uh, you know, uh, if you want to learn a little bit about travel law and travel consumer protection, it's Wolf Travel Law. Um, and that's it. Awesome. Warren, thanks again and uh, safe travels in the future for you. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>